Hello, everybody. This is AG here, and welcome to Bowmanville, Ontario, Canada, as we are here for the 13th race of the season in the Haas IndyCar Series 2022. This is the Canadian Grand Prix. 21 laps of action around this 2.45 mile road course, the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. And one of the most difficult places to make a pass on the circuit here in the Haas IndyCar Series. A very narrow road course, a very wide sweeping road course. It's going to be a fun one here today, especially once you get to that cycle of pit stops as well. That's going to be the big determining factor on who gets the race victory. About a 16 to 19 lap fuel run for these guys, and it's a 21 lap race, so... These guys are going to be pulling strategy off right at the end of the race. But the other big factor that we will see here today is attrition. And you have to stay on the racetrack if you're going to win the race. And uh, it's a difficult track to maneuver even by yourself sometimes. And especially in turn number two, that wide sweeping left-hander. Qualifying yesterday, we saw a couple drivers go off in that corner. We might see some of that here today in the race. Another big storyline coming into this event here today is... How Fitzwater and Trey Smith, the two championship leaders, fared in qualifying. Zachary Fitzwater will be starting 15th here today, and Trey Smith will be starting 20th. And that opens the door significantly for some guys behind him in the point standings, mainly Brian Rodriguez and Nathan Faden. Rodriguez starts in the third position, and Faden starts on the outside pole here today. Very good race for either of those drivers. Even a race victory could find themselves within a race win worth of points heading into the next race with seven races left to go. So, like I said in Michigan last time out, Fitzwater and Trey Smith have yet to really pull away with this championship. A lot can happen between now and the finish of the season. There's a lot of time for things to happen, both of those drivers, and they didn't really have a good run in qualifying in a place where you need the start up front to have a good day. So we'll have to see what happens as the race goes along, but uh, Fitzwater and Trey Smith might not necessarily be in good positions to hold on to the 71-point lead that they have on the field coming into this event. And of course, speaking of the points, Fitzwater does still hold the points. He actually took it away at the Michigan 100, but he's got a one-point lead on Trey Smith. So in, in all due respect, they pretty much share the championship lead at this point. But Brian Rodriguez is the next guy in line, third in points, 71 points behind. So there's no mathematical chance that Rodriguez can take the points lead here today, but he could definitely cut it in half uh, if he has a good day, and that would be within a race win worth of points. Ace Garcia, 81 points behind. Nathan Faden, 83 points behind. You have Elijah Gordon there, 86 behind. You almost won in Michigan last time out. Thomas Troxel, 88 behind. Ethan Lewis, 96 behind, all within 100 points. And then Cole Raymond there. 106 behind coming into this event with Noah Clifton 109 behind this is actually a closer gap from 10th to 26th than there is from the points lead to 10th so that's how much of a lead Fitzwater and Trey Smith have put on the field coming into this season we'll go ahead and get these guys to roll off here from the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park and you saw qualifying yesterday you saw that Richard Kingar who won at Willow Springs earlier this season won the pole in that race He's going to start on the pole here today for the Canadian Grand Prix alongside him. Nathan Faden there in the double zero. In run number two, you have Brian Rodriguez, another driver who failed to qualify for the Indy 250. Justin Zidell there starting fourth. Zach Winkle will be starting to the inside of Landon Smith Jr. in row number three. Those were the fast six drivers, and the guys who just barely missed out on that. Angel Oliveira starting seventh alongside Chris Reynolds, who won the last race here in the Haas Indy Carter Series, grabbed that race victory in the Michigan 100 after failing to qualify for the Indy 250. Brandon Nelson and Ace Garcia make up row number five. You got Cole Raymond and Nicholas Samadio in row number six. Scott Upton and Logan Williams. Zachary Fitzwater there in the 15th starting position alongside Ethan Lewis. You have yourself Jay Mapp and Thomas Troxel in row number nine. Eric Monaco and Trey Smith in row 10. Elijah Gordon, Noah Clifton in row 11. Rock Nelson, Caleb Rose, Jesse Turner, and Reggie Fogelman. That is how they line up here from the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. 2.45 mile long racetrack here. But a lot of hills and a lot of wide sweeping turns. Kind of in a way like Watkins Glen. Problem is, this track is very narrow. There really isn't any room to go any more than two wide across most of these corners, and uh, with how little room there is, it's actually very difficult to get a run on a driver and make a pass for any position here 
on this racetrack. One of the best places to make a pass, if you have an opportunity, is at the south end of the racetrack right there where you have that very sharp left-hand corner, right-hand corner, heading into the Andretti Straight. Check here, it looks like the 32 of Ace Garcia might have an issue. I don't feel like redoing all this, so uh, we'll go ahead and make sure Ace Garcia starts and we'll get back to the start of the race here from Canadian Tire. And now we have all 26 drivers ready to go here for the Canadian Grand Prix here at the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. I was doing so well on that intro, I didn't want to have to scrap all of that. Figured we just, you know, do it the old-fashioned way. But uh, all 26 drivers, of course, want to make sure they all cross the start-finish line. That's the most important thing, but once they do, it's game on here at the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. So we'll have to see how much attrition there is in this race. We'll have to see how the pit strategy plays out. Like I said, 16 and 19 lap fuel run for these guys. It'll definitely determine who gets the race victory here in 21 laps. Here we go. Green flag in the air in Canada. Richard Kingart gets the jump on the start. Edgy there through turn two with Zydell and Brian Rodriguez, but a great jump there for Richard Kinghart. That's all he needed in this race to have a good shot at the race victory. Nathan Fade looking to clear for the second position. And then the battle's on for third between Zydell and Rodriguez. And once these guys get single file, that's pretty much where they're going to be for the most part until the second pit stops. Nathan Fade got a good jump there. On the south end of the racetrack there, turn five and down the Andretti straight. Trying to close in here on the 97 machine for the race lead. But Zydell has third, Rodriguez down in fourth, and then it's Winkle and Lannis Smith Jr. So the fast six still in the top six positions. But they are in slightly different positions than where they started. Zydell was able to jump the 13 there. First lap, we're going to be led by Richard Richard. Bonus point towards the championship once again for him. You got a point for the polls, and you get a point there for leading a lap, and... You may end up getting uh, the extra point for leading the most laps as well here today. Everyone got through lap one cleanly, so all 26 drivers still on the racetrack here and now in a single file line because it's just very difficult to remain double wide at any part on this racetrack considering how narrow it is. But this is a bit of a fast racetrack though. Um, and that's another reason why these guys tend to stay in their respective positions because it's not the only place where you really slow down. It's at the south end around turn five and outside of that, you're pretty much going full speed pretty much around this whole place and it's really hard to get any advantage on a driver ahead of you and even that corner right there it's really hard to get a drive off to the inside which would traditionally be the easiest way to make a pass around this racetrack king art's pulling away here and this number 97 king art definitely has a fast car here today this team ns racing looking for their fourth win of the season they almost got their fourth win at Michigan last week with Elijah Gordon, but they lost out by 7 one thousandths of a second there. Uh, King Art looking at his second win of the season and his second on a road course as well. He's got about a second lead on Nathan Faden in the double zero machine. See where Fitzwater and Trey Smith filed in after all that. Fitzwater down to 16th and Trey Smith down to the 21st position. So they both lost one position from where they respectively started. Here we got a side-by-side -side battle. You know it's deep in the field. Troxel and Ethan Lewis. A couple of guys who are up there in the point standings are right on each other. 7th and 8th in the point standings. But they did not get a good start in this race. Eric Monaco looking to make a move here on Zachary Fitzwater. That's going to be another position right there that Fitzwater is going to lose. And uh, with every position, another point lost back in that field. So... Fitzwater uh, not, not in a good position right now to uh, hold on to a race win worth of points lead. As Nathan Faden currently holds on to second, that awards 40 points. The number 66 of Zachary Fitzwater now going to be in the 17th position. And I cannot for the life of me remember how many points that position awards. Let's, let's see. Let's see while we have the time before anything happens on the racetrack. King Art doing a great job in this 97. Of course, yesterday we did see a couple guys go off right here in turn number two. Very wide sweeping corner, and uh, if you go off the line just a little bit, 
You're in that grass and into the tire barrier, but thankfully everyone has kept it clean in this race so far. All 26 drivers still on the racetrack and on the lead lap. So 17th awards 10 points, so that's a 30 point swing right there at the moment between Nathan Faden and Zachary Fitzwater, and that would be 53 points, which is a perfect race. So it's actually not possible, the way they are currently running that in the next race, Faden could take the points lead away from Fitzwater. Because Fitzwater is guaranteed at least one point. Every driver is guaranteed at least one point if they qualify for the race. So. As of right now, it'd be a 53-point lead for Fitzwater ahead of Faden. Of course, he'd have a much smaller lead ahead of Trey Smith as for the sixth position. Angel Vera, he's going to try on the outside. Alanis Smith Jr., that's a tough place to get it to work. He had a shot there, but could not make it on the 34. King Art holding on. That lead shrunk just a little bit right there. Nathan Faden kind of keeping it within a second of King Art, and that could be huge towards who gets the race victory later on in this race. If you're within a second, you can definitely pull some strategy and uh, get an advantage on the guy ahead of you after that cycle. Of course, you know, considering how late that cycle's going to be, that's really going to play into effect who gets the race victory. Logan Williams going to try to get a position here on Ace Garcia, but not able to do so. Back right there, 12th and 13th for those guys. Fitzwater behind Eric Monaco got around him in 17th, and then Trace Smith still in the 21st position after he finished last in Michigan. Uh, after winning the Indy 250 and then winning at Road America, it's not been a good, good, good string of races for Trace Smith the past couple of times. Out, lost the points lead in Michigan to Zachary Fitzwater, and the way it's currently running right now, he'll lose a few more points to Fitzwater, albeit just maybe about Five. It'll still be about a six point difference between the top two heading into the next race. But uh, not exactly what Trey Smith wanted here today a Canadian tire. King Art pulled away there from Faden that last lap. Rodriguez is fourth behind Justin Zidell, and Rodriguez in the position that rewards 32 points. From 71 behind. So he would gain 22 points on Zachary Fitzwater and be 50 points behind. Here comes Olvera. He's got it now on Landon Smith Jr. Very tight there into the corner, but Olvera's going to grab the position away from the 34. Don't see many passes on this racetrack, so every time we see one, it's a highlight here. Now 1.67 seconds for King Hart Paul on Nathan Faden. About halfway through this run. Actually, not even quite halfway through this run yet before the cycle. Cole Raymond looking here on Chris Reynolds, our last winner here in the Haas IndyCar Series. Reynolds won that race in Michigan by seven one thousandths of a second ahead of Elijah Gordon. Looking for another top ten here in the Haas IndyCar Series after he failed to qualify for the Indianapolis 250 once again. The three drivers who failed to qualify for the Indy 250 qualified top 10 the second straight week in a row. They did so last time out in Michigan. And, uh, they have done so again here at Canadian Tire. Reynolds closing in here on Brandon Nelson. We'll have to see if he has an opportunity of getting around this 22 machine. That is for the eighth position. Definitely looking pretty sporty here on the gearbox of the 22. Lap 8 of 21 now, and Zydell is closed in to the gearbox of Faden. Faden falling off a little bit there from Richard Kinghart. We'll have to see if Zydell has any opportunity of getting around this double zero here for the second position. Zydell would love to get a race victory in this series. It's been a long, long time since he's gone the victory lane. A lot has happened since the last time and Justin Zydell has gone the victory lane in the Haas IndyCar Series four and a half years ago. Grabbed that race victory in his first ever start, has not seen victory lane since, he, even though he won a championship the next year in 2019. For Seidel, another one of those guys who failed to qualify for the Indianapolis 250, so he'd love to rebound from that and uh, get this race victory. Uh, the other two drivers who have failed to qualify for the Indy 250 have already won races this season, and King are en route to possibly getting another one. 
But Seidel would love to get one this season here. We've only had seven different winners so far in the first 12 races of the season. Of course, Fitzwater and Trey Smith have won about half of those. They have won half of those, actually. And then Elijah Gordon's won twice, and you have Faden, Kinghart, Olvera, and Chris Reynolds, the other drivers who have won races this season. And it looks like we may end up with another two-time winner today because both Nathan Faden and Richard King are running very well, but Seidel is right there. I think it's a matter of time. Just a matter of time before Zydell gets around this double zero. I don't think you get that close and uh, not make the pass. And if Zydell can clear Kinghart or clear Faden here, he may actually make a run for Kinghart for the race lead. Zydell does appear to be rather quick out there in the five machine, and that may be playing to his advantage. Of course, if you have a fast race car, you're going to definitely make moves through the field, even in a place where it is difficult to make a pass. Well, Bear is closed into the gearbox of Zach Winkle. He's pulled away from Richard or uh, Landis Smith Jr. right there. And you got uh, Reynolds and Brandon Nelson still in their respective positions. And at, at what point does Idell make the move? He had a shot there down the Andretti straight. Decided not to make it, but he might be able to get it here to the last corner. Might try to set him up. Still doing a great job, but these guys are losing time to the race leader of Richard Kingart. Problem is, you know, there's pretty much one line around this entire racetrack. So you almost have to move someone out of the way in order to make a pass. And obviously, you don't really want to do that in an open wheel machine on a fast paced road course like this. Olvera on the gearbox of Zach Winkle. That is for the fifth position, if Olvera can, in fact, get it there. And focusing on both of these battles right here. And Zydell, I'm sure he's getting a bit frustrated getting stuck behind this double zero here of Nathan Faden. And that's actually reeling in Rodriguez for this battle as well. But Zydell doing all he can to close in. They're allowing Kingart to kind of pull away with this one. And that is not what you want to do heading into the cycle of pit stops. That's going to give Kingart some options for the strategy. Possibly winning this race. Once again, Zydell is right there down the Andretti straight, but just no room to make the move on Faden. But he might have a shot here. He tried to hook it on the inside and have a shot, but could not do it. Olvera's falling off a little bit from Winkle. And once again, they lost some more time there to Richard Kingart. Now three second lead for the 97. And this is exactly what I was talking about. It's such a difficult place to make a pass just because of how narrow the racetrack is and being a one-groove racetrack essentially the entire way around. These guys are definitely having some issues getting past each other, even though Zydell is clearly the faster car. I am uh, genuinely surprised at how clean the race has been. Nobody has gone off the racetrack at any point in this race. Got double wide right at the back of the field there between Fogelman and Noah Clifton. Fitzwater and Trey Smith still in their respective positions, and that's kind of how he expected it to stay during this green flag run. Zydell is still right there on the gearbox of Nathan Faden. Still, they're losing time. Three and a half seconds now. And Kingard just has that clean racetrack ahead of him, and that is allowing him to just pull away with this race lead. It's going to give him a very good opportunity at uh, playing the strategy to his favor and possibly getting the race victory. And something that I think, if I can remember, it's been a while since we've done a race here. But uh, one thing I know that has happened in past Canadian tire races here in the Hazen Industries is after the cycle of pit stops, Guys tend to go off a little bit more of those cold tires. That tends to be a bit more of an issue here than uh, at any other place, and that is something to keep in mind once that cycle is done. These guys may just get a little too aggressive as for fifth, Olvera. Gonna try the outside on Winkle, and I don't know if he'll have the advantage to do so, but he's gonna try down the Andretti straight. Oh boy, that was tight right there. They're still side by side, but Olvera's going to have the advantage next corner. There was contact there. I think Winkle might hold on to this position. I don't know. He will for now, but Olvera's still going to be alongside him. 
But now that's going to open the door for Landis Smith Jr. to get back around Olvera because Olvera could not get around that 28. And they're going to be side by side through turn number two. Got to be really careful doing that. That's going to slow those guys down. Landis Smith Jr. might actually get the position back on Olvera. I think he will. It's a tough break there for Angel Olvera. trying to make that move there on Zach Winkle, but uh, could not get it to stick. Lance Smith Jr. going to take that position back away from Olvera after he lost it. Zydell's kind of fallen off now from the double zero. I think the tires just went away on that five machine. But King Arts, uh, he's all by himself out there. And then number 97 machine with a nearly four second lead on the field. Lap 13 to 21, like I said, we'll, we expect the cycle to begin around lap 16 for these guys. 16 laps in. So we'll have to see who makes the first move heading down that pit lane and uh, see if they can gain any advantage. And the thing is, with it being so close to the end of the race, you may see some guys take no tires at the end there. And just fuel, and because of that, you may end up getting some guys who do take tires going much faster at the end of the race. The thing is, it's only 21 laps here, so not a lot of time for these guys to get that advantage. But some of these guys like Faden, Seidel, and Rodriguez are all right here, but they are all four or five seconds behind our race leader, so. Might want to try something to possibly get the race victory. We got a slight buffer between those guys and the 28 machine as Chris Reynolds to the inside of Brandon Nelson. He'll finally make the move on Nelson there. That is for eighth. Reynolds doing a solid job here today inside this top ten. Can have his eyes set now on Angel Olvera. We've had more passes than I expected kind of throughout this field. Especially on the back end there, you know, with Landis and Machina Olvera, they swap positions there, and then of course Reynolds got around Brandon Nelson. Of course, Fitzwater and Trey Smith have kind of been nowhere to be found in this race deep in the field. 4.7 seconds now for the 97 of Richard Kingart. These three guys have kind of found themselves all together and kind of stuck where they are. Winkle's actually pulling away a little bit now from Olvera and Landis and Jr. And Reynolds trying to close in there on the 25. Brandon Nelson is now ninth and Cole Raymond just inside the top 10. We got a battle here. Monaco looking on Jay Knapp. He's got that nose to the inside heading into turn five, and in 5A, he's going to get it. I open the door for Fitzwater to get around the 81 of the Monaco. That's two positions Monaco's made up on the racetrack, which for a place like this is very impressive. It's the downside for Monaco is that he's really deep in the field. So each of those positions is only worth one point. Here we go. Richard Kingart's come down the pit lane a little bit earlier than I anticipated there. Faden and Zydell are not going to get caught off on strategy, but Brian Rodriguez is going to stay out, and so will Winkle and a lot of the guys back in the field. As a matter of fact, it was the top three guys who came down. I think Ethan Lewis may have come down for his stop. He's the first guy, so lap 14. But now Brian Rodriguez out front and three of the top running drivers on the pit lane. Kingard had that four or five second lead on the field when he came down there. Zydell wants to get around Faden. That may have been his opportunity right there on the pit lane. So those guys, they're going to have six to go on this set of tires. But realistically, all Kingard needs to do is not wreck out in this race. Now, there is a chance that someone back in here may try to play some strategy, go fuel only, and get a jump there. I mean, Rodriguez is a guy to do it, but the thing is, Rodriguez has a shot at this championship, and I know he would not want to lose any amount of possible points he can get in this race trying to get the race victory. Because he's got a great opportunity at really jumping the field, jumping, not jumping the field, but closing in there. On Fitzwater and Trey Smith, who are both coming down this time. A couple guys still staying out in the back of the field right there. Rodriguez will lead a lap, though, so that'll be a bonus point for him. We'll see if he goes fuel only or tires. He's going to take some tires right here, which is probably the smart move. King Art's going to easily surpass these guys, but um, definitely want to get that advantage. Here comes King Art, all the, already off of turn number one. 
Smith Rodriguez and Landis Smith Jr. make it out ahead of Faden and Zidell. This is going to be close. I think Rodriguez may jump him, though. Faden and Zidell are closing in, but that worked out fairly well for Rodriguez. And on top of that, he led a lap, so he's going to get the bonus point right there. So Rodriguez doing all he can to maximize his points here today. Landis Smith Jr. did a great job with that as well. He moved up to third. Actually moved up three positions after the cycle, and he's actually closing in on Rodriguez for another one. But he's going to lose one. I don't think he's going to hold off Faden here. That double zero is closing in on the 34 for the third position, or it will tentatively be third place once this whole cycle is done. San Medeo stayed out, and Nicholas San Medeo is going to lead a lap here in the Canadian Grand Prix. It's not been San Medeo's season. Even though he's 12th in points, he's just been nowhere to be found for these race victories this year. So he's actually doing a lot better than I thought he was, but... Uh, your King are coming around right there, and it's not even going to be a competition. I think they did go fuel only, though. I don't know how well this is going to play out for these guys. He's got a battle there between Lana Smith Jr. and Nathan Faden, and then Zydell might finally have an opportunity to get a position here as well. He doesn't want to get stuck behind Lana Smith Jr., but he's going to have no other choice but to stay behind that 34. So Faden now up to third. They're all chasing uh, Richard Kingard, who has been in a league of his own here today at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. And Zydell again, just like it was earlier on when he was behind Ethan Faden, right on the gearbox of another driver, trying to get around him for position. Nicholas Samadio up to sixth now, but he did not take tires, and I'm wondering if that's going to work out for him. Don't, I don't feel like it will. Ethan Lewis is one of the first guys to come down there on lap 15, and he's going to get passed here by Elijah Gordon midway through the field. So there is Fitzwater. Uh, he lost. We well, actually, you know what? He gained a little bit, but Trey Smith again might finish in last place. That that's not good. Two last place finishes in a row is not at all how you win a championship. Five-second lead for King Art on Rodriguez and Nathan Faden. Faden might get second here. So both Rodriguez and Faden with a great opportunity at closing in on Fitzwater and Trey Smith. And Trey Smith in particular, as they come around, Fitzwater is 16th. So Fitzwater actually gained a position right there. So Fitzwater is going to remain the points leader, given he does not wreck out in this race. And Trey Smith there in the 41. It looks like it's going to be two consecutive last place finishes. He was first place in two consecutive races, winning at Indianapolis and in Road America, and then in Michigan at Canadian Tire. It looks like he's going to go last place two races in a row. That is not good for Trey Smith, who held on to the points lead after that Road America race. After the Indy 250, I think he had the points lead. Pretty sure. Doesn't have it anymore. 5.08 seconds now, so uh, only unless King Hart wrecks out. This is King Hart's race to lose. The battle's on for second. Actually, the battle's on right here for the fourth position between Zydell and Landon Smith Jr. Zydell's going to try here in the 34 machine. That is going to be for fourth if he can get it, but we saw earlier on that did not work out too well for Zydell. You know, Sam Medeo is one of these guys, I didn't I didn't really think about this too much. He, along with Landis Smith Jr., are not that far off. I mean, they're much closer to Rodriguez and Faden than they are, than Rodriguez and Faden are to Fitzwater. So, Sam Medeo still easily has a shot at this championship. If he could get a good run here, get some good points, you know, that's going to help him out. Landis Smith Jr. as well, another guy who's definitely benefiting here today. And that strategy may have played out for Sam Medeo because he's not falling off. Zach Winkle took tires earlier on, and he's kind of staying behind. Here we go for the last lap. White flag for Richard Kinghart here at Canadian Tire. He's led all but one, all but two laps, actually, in this race. Another thing for Sam Medeo. He actually got a bonus point there for leading a lap. You know, he may have a shot here at Zydell and Landis Smith Jr. if something goes awry between these two guys. It's been a clean race, though. No one has gone off racetrack here today, which is great. Looks like Rodriguez will get second and Faden will get third, but Zydell still has a shot here to maybe get fourth from Landon Smith Jr. And 
And I think Samadio is hoping that happens, that he can get another point there, another position, a couple more points for Samadio if he can do it. Just like Willow Springs, Richard Kingard has been hard to beat from the pole, and uh, it's going to be a second win of the season, so seven winners in 13 races. Once again, another two-time winner this season, and NS Racing is going to get their fourth win of the year as well. Off the final corner, Richard Kingart wins the Canadian Grand Prix. Brian Rodriguez is going to finish in second. And then Nathan Faden will finish in third with the podium. Landis Smith Jr., Justin Zidell, Nicholas Samadio. Oh, no! Winkle right at the end! He lost one position. Just one place, but he right at the end of the race, Winkle had an issue. He's going to finish in the eighth position instead of seventh. That actually, all things considered, that could have been a lot worse for him. He could have lost a lot more. And Trey Smith will finish last. Fitzwater will finish 16th. But Richard Kingart, uh, definitely the class of the field once again on the road course here in the Haas IndyCar Series as he gets his second race victory of the season in this almost clean race. Something right there at the end happening to Winkle, but he still manages to finish in the 8th position. But Brian Rodriguez and Nathan Fame, they're going to gain a bit here on the field. Mainly Fitzwater and Trey Smith, I should say. Atlantis and Mifinia, Nicholas Samadio, a couple of those guys not too far off. Brandon Nelson as well, right behind Samadio in the points. And even Chris Reynolds, who actually fell to 15th. So uh, he at one point was ahead of Brandon Nelson, but did not have a good exchange on the cycle of pit stops there. Everybody finished on the lead lap. There were no off-track excursions. So nothing to review, which is which is great. I don't have to do anything after this race, except uh, process the points. And that's going to be very interesting because Fitzwater there finished 16th. Decent run for him. But Trey Smith's going to fall back again. And uh, that's, that's not good for our Indy 250 winner, who uh, won two races in a row and then finished last in two races straight. But hey, we still got seven races left to go, I think. I think. And, and this, this may change depending on when this goes up. The next race is Gateway. Maybe not. Hold on a minute. Might not be Gateway. I think I may. No, it is Gateway. If if it all works out the way I do want it to work out. The reason why the actual gate our Gateway race is not happening during the actual Gateway race is because that same weekend is Watkins Glen, and obviously Watkins Glen is a staple in this series, and um, we want to go to Watkins Glen there near the end of August. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure the next race is going to be at Gateway. We'll have Indy Road Course, Nashville, Pikes Peak, the Duel at the Glen, and then Pocono for the finale. Maybe not in that order, and maybe not by the end of August. But those races will be the next races. Actually, we also have Nashville as well. Why did I Why did I not mention Nashville or Pikes Peak? We also have Nashville and Pikes Peak there as well. Uh, we still haven't done Nashville yet. But hey, thank you guys so much for watching. Congratulations to Richard Kingar for getting the race victory here at the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. We will see you guys next time out, wherever that will end up being. Probably Gateway, but maybe not. I don't know. We'll, we'll, just, we'll figure it out. But one of those tracks will be the next race on the schedule here for the Haas and Car Series. I'm looking forward to see how this championship heats up. Seven races left to go. Ryan Rodriguez and Nathan Faden are closing in on this title run. We'll have to see how close they are here. Here are the points for the Haas IndyCar Series after 13 races. Congratulations to Richard Kingart once again, and we'll find you better the next time. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys later.